Welcome back to Snorner, guys, and this is the Ural 63095 Typhoon U. Now, some of you guys may be like, what the heck is this and why should I care about it? Well, there's actually a lot that went into this mod, and it's got a really, really cool story behind it. So the creator of this mod, it's his first mod, and the entire project was done completely from scratch. He literally, like, worked on it in his spare time over the course of about two months, and this is the final product of his work. So it's really, really, really interesting. Now, some of the things that he lists on the mod.io page include uh, it having an independent suspension, unique repair module, snorkel, roof customization, active and off-road suspension, some standard modules, and most standard trailers. So I, for one, am really excited to get into this truck, and let's go ahead and dive into it. So what do you say we fire it up, take it in the garage, check out the customization, and then put it through some tests? Starts up quick. Now, it's interesting that we're reviewing this mod shortly after reviewing the MTVR mod because that mod was definitely a truck that could have been in the game and it actually matched up really well alongside the ANK MK38. It didn't feel unbalanced, it didn't feel out of place, and this I definitely feel could be something along those lines as long as the performance sort of falls in line with uh, about where a standard in-game truck would be. So, heading into the customization options, we have actually three different engines. Uh, they're, God, they're a bit of a mouthful. First of, first of all, we have the YAMZ-53443-40. That's the default engine, giving you a power-to-weight rating of B+. The next engine, which is the YAMZ-53603-01, that gives you a power-to-weight rating of A+. And finally, the YAMZ-5367, which gives you a power-to-weight rating of S+. So we're going to start with the A-plus engine, and then we're going to go up to the S-plus engine from there to see how much it affects the performance and the drivability of the rig. So we'll do that. Now we have three different gearbox options, balanced, high range, and off-road. I'm going to go with the off-road one for testing purposes, and then we'll probably switch it to the high range uh, for the bridge jump later, which is definitely a necessary part of our testing. And as far as suspension-wise, we have active and we have off-road, which the interesting thing is they don't really change the base height, but it says increased suspension uh, with, with high cross-country ability, soft, poorly suited for the transportation of goods. So we're probably going to do, honestly, we're probably just going to leave it on active. And it seems as though we get really one tire size option, and that is 51s, which 51s are not bad. You've got Tega tires as an option. You've got a lot, uh, actually a really wide range of off-road tires as an option. If you were going to be hauling with this thing, I would definitely recommend going with the rear dually setup, the double dually setup in the back. But again, you actually have a lot of different options for doing that. And then, of course, you have your chained options. I'm going to go with the MSH3 because I think it looks a little bit better on this truck than the Tega tires. And I think some people got a little bit fed up with putting Tega tires on everything. And I completely get that. I completely understand that. So we're going to throw the MSH, or sorry, MHS3 uh, on this particular truck. Now we're going to go ahead and handle the winch setup. And I think for this one, we're going to go with an advanced medium. It's really the best option for this size of truck. Spare wheel wise, I mean, we actually already got a spare wheel on it. So we're going to leave it as is. And then frame out on wise, we have the options of a flatbed, sideboard, another flatbed, another sideboard, IM50 loading crane, saddle low, and repair module, with the which the repair module looks super sick. That actually looks very, very, very cool. And I'll probably end up running that as I can see this being a really, really cool repair and support rig. We'll also do a snorkel on the side just because that'll give us a little bit better uh, water fording capability. And we've got, let's see, radio module and lamp up there, which are actually already installed. Front bumper, we have the stock one. And then wheels-wise, we've got MH MHS rims one and two. I prefer the second option, so I'm going to go with those. And interior customization-wise, we kind of have nothing. So now we're going to go ahead and test it out, and I will make sure to use the highway gearbox and the more powerful engine, especially for when we go to do the bridge jump later on. So let's go ahead and leave the garage and see how this thing drives. Fires up real quick. Throw it in reverse. Throw it back in low plus, turn it around, and then let's see what kind of trailers it can pull. Man, look at this interior. Yo, for a first mod, this thing is on another level. It's dang good. All right, ramped flatbed, step deck semi. Um, obviously, any saddle low 
uh, semi-trailer you could do. Oh god, that won't work because again, it's saddle high. But anything that's saddle low it's, is definitely going to work. Uh, all these saddle high trailers, you can forget about it. Now, I really wouldn't recommend pulling anything heavy with this truck though because the creator himself said that it's not really meant for that. And I'm inclined to agree with him because to be fair, he made it. So let's go ahead and make a right. It's pretty dang stable. I mean, it pulled the wheels up a little bit, but an ANK would have flipped over doing that, especially a lifted one. Now let's actually see what it does when we activate the suspension. It's a pretty decent amount of lift. And this is actually the perfect spot to activate the suspension as we go down into the river because, yeah, I mean, with diff lock always on and all wheels always on, this thing, this thing could pretty much go through whatever you throw at it. I mean, it's a really, really stout feeling, reliable feeling rig. And it's heavily armored as well. Heavily, heavily armored. Let's run it through a hill climb test and see what she do. And go! Scrape the bumper a little bit. Will it stay in high? Not with the mid-range engine, it will not. Question, though. Will it do it with the high-end engine? We'll do that just to make sure it refreshes the engine properly. All right, let's try it with the high-end engine. Oh, it hung the bumper up on the rocks. Oh, that's annoying. That doesn't really happen to me very often, but when it does, man, is it annoying. And the thing is, the rocks are directly in the proper path that we want to take. Like, directly in our path. Oh, well, we'll try and take this path over here. Let me repair and refuel first, and then we'll try and take this pathway over here. We'll try to hit it at a bit of an angle. There we go, to avoid some damage. That's high range! Well, it made it almost all the way up, and you can see what a difference having the S-plus engine in it actually makes. It's definitely a lot more powerful, and it's got a lot more grunt to it. The steering wheel's huge, but gauges work, which, for this being somebody's first mod, it's wild. Wild how much stuff he, like, that he actually has working on this thing. This is not what you look at and go, yeah, I bet that's his first mod. It's not what I would say. Not in the least. Now, it does feel a little bit, I wouldn't say overpowered with the S-Plus engine, but it does feel highly, highly capable, and it feels like it could go through just about most obstacles you would throw, uh, you would throw at it, especially mud-based stuff. We'll take it through some of the deeper mud in a second, but... It's making its way through the shallow mud and high, no problem at all. And of course, with a 51 on like, you know, these uh, MHS-3 tires, you can't really argue with it. All right, let's head for the deeper stuff. And plunging it in. Spins a little bit. That's actually very similar performance to what the MTBR MK23 did. Except the MK... M, sorry, the MTBR did not start digging right at the end like that. That's a little, uh, that's a little interesting. Oh, oh. Oh, wow. Okay, so the MTBR actually did better in the mud than this thing. This thing, now I'm actually going to say that it feels a little bit more balanced uh, to the stock in-game trucks than the MTBR does because as you can see, it's really having to back off and slow down and really kind of, you know, control itself through here. Uh, we're having to back down and, and really kind of take the slow and steady approach. Nothing wrong with that by any means. Nothing wrong with that at all. However, it is something that you should keep in mind. Yeah, the MTBR absolutely outperforms it in the mud. Really well-balanced feeling, though. Really well-balanced feeling performance in mud. It feels like a truck that really could get stuck if you make the wrong decision or you make a wrong turn. So let's drive it up out of this slushy mess now. We'll take it through the dips before we head to the good old bridge jump. Yes. The proper good old bridge jump. Come on. Kicking that clutch. All right, let's see how you do through the dips, bud. Oh, no! Well, that was short-lived. Yikes. 
just going to use this guy as our little uh, our little rescue because it can rescue pretty much just about anything and we don't really need to, you know, need to worry about it and go, "Huh, I wonder if it'll be able to rescue us." No, we know it'll be able to rescue us. Yep, thank you. Appreciate your assistance, bud. So, fun fact, with this repair box, it is a little bit top-heavy, but again, adding to the realism factor. And if you attack this straight on, I was thinking that the bumper was going to bottom out just right into the ground, but actually, I mean, it bottoms out a little bit. You will get a little bit of damage if you try to do this head-on, but it does still continue to climb, and it does still continue to make it through. Pretty impressive, actually. Almost high-centered right there, but I'm trying to test the limits of where it actually does high-center, and... No, it didn't even high center there either. Really nice performance out of it. Like, I've got to say, really, really good stuff. One more to do. Can you do it? Oh, yeah. Can do it just fine. Now, before we head to the bridge jump, I'm going to go ahead and equip the high range box. Oh, my God. We have eight gears now. Holy crap. Off we go to the bridge jump. This could either go, like, really well and will land with no damage, or really badly and will nose into the ground and flip over and land on our roof. I don't know. It could go one of those two ways, or it could go a completely different way entirely. You never really know when you're setting up for the bridge jump. It's a, it's a finicky one. Dropping it down to fourth gear. It wasn't too happy about using sixth uh, to climb that hill. Dropping it down to fourth again. It'll it'll hold about fourth though, going up the steep hills. Oh boy! Here we go! Let's get it. There's seven. Oh, she sped up. Pushed our dude back in the seat. Let's go! Oh my god! Wow. Okay, so distance-wise, it beat out the MTBR by a lot. The entire truck just flat out cleared the barrels. I mean, it did a really good job at that. Now, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this truck and its custom add-ons. I personally think it's a really, really cool truck. I hope it sees some updates later on in the future, and I definitely think this one could be implemented into a modded campaign playthrough without breaking the game or imbalancing things. So if y'all enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see y'all next time.